and welcome to the Oakler's YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to be going over the July bag making B Club box, which is for a bag that is so stinking cute. Today, we are making the Susu Sling, which is so fun to say, and that comes to us from Saya Swag. You guys, this bag is so stinking cute. Now, let me just tell you, the pattern isn't hard, okay? The pattern is not a difficult pattern. It is a very easy pattern to follow. Kasaya has a video to go with it, so it's supposed to work in conjunction with a video. Um, it is very easy to follow. It is very, very adorable. It comes together absolutely perfect. However, we do have curves, we do have some zippers, we do have some thicker materials, and we have some layers of materials. So that's why I say I don't think it's for beginners, purely because just pretty much because of the layers. Honestly, just because of the layers. You, you really need to know tension and needles and material pretty well, in my opinion. However, you use quilt cotton and it's gonna be a much easier make. But that's what I'm saying, this month's box is more for advanced beginner intermediate sewers. So let's just go over this adorable little bag. This is the Susu Sling, it's so stinky cute. On the front, we have this front panel here. This panel right here is actually the lining material and I just decided I really wanted some contrast so I used the lining material for this. You have plenty of material to play around with putting different things everywhere. Then we have this adorable little magnetic flap on the front, open that up, little slip pocket, so stinking cute. On the back we have a adorable little zipper pocket right there. We have our beautiful handcrafted tag on the bottom from Heartwood and Hyde. I love the gusset, it just fits so stinking perfect. Like the shape of this bag blew me away. When you turn it out, it's just, it's just absolutely perfect. The gusset is perfect. <laughs> I love a good gusset, I really do. On the top we have this adorable handle that's actually installed in a really fun way. So if you're somebody that like gets a little, uh, a little worried about D-ring connectors because sometimes it can add a lot of bulk to seams and it can, not, it can be a little difficult sometimes with some patterns. This D-ring connector, I love. It's a D-ring connector slash strap and the installation of this is brilliant in my opinion. Then we have this beautiful crossbody strap. I love that the crossbody strap completely contrasts with the rest of the bag. I think that looks so good. We have a double zipper pull on the top so we open this little key patootie up. Inside we have another zipper pocket. The zipper pocket in the lining is completely optional. If you just don't feel like adding it, you don't have to. And then we just have a lining panel on the front. I love this bag so much. This is a bound bag, meaning when we finish it off, we just sew the seams together and we cover them with binding. For the binding, I'm gonna be using a strip of the water resistant canvas. It looks so good. Here, let me show you. It looks so good. I mean, I love using all kinds of binding, but like, do you see that? You don't, you don't even see it. It's like invisible binding. It just looks like the lining material, right? I love that look. I just love it. It's so clean and crisp. So thank you so much to Kasaya for allowing us to feature your pattern on the channel today. I absolutely love this. I believe this is Kasaya's first bag pattern. I am so excited to see what else she comes out with because if this is what we're starting with, like, we are gonna be blown away. <laughs> Thank you also to the Bag Making Bee Club for sponsoring today's video. If you're interested in joining the Bag Making Bee Club, make sure you check the description down below. I'll have a link to sign up. It is a monthly mystery box. It is geared for advanced beginner to intermediate sewers. We have had a couple months that were more beginner friendly boxes. However, that's not the group that the box is targeted for. So this is more of an intermediate level box. And this month for sure, we're, we're, we're sticking with that. If you're interested in just a very beginner, beginner level box, stay tuned because there are discussions happening behind closed doors. There's no doors, there's just text. If you're new to the Oaklords YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you want more patterns from Kasaya, let her know, okay? You can comment down below. You can go find her on Instagram. I'm gonna tag Kasaya everywhere. Make sure you let Kasaya know and make sure you check out Kasaya's YouTube channel as well. She does the most amazing bag tutorials on her industrial machine. That if you were lacking motivation to make something, just go watch one of her videos and you will get your butt in the sewing room right away. You will want to make something after you see her. She's brilliant. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, so for this pattern, you're gonna need between a third to a half a yard of your exterior material. It's gonna be depending on if you're gonna be making a crossbody strap or not. We're gonna be using webbing for a crossbody strap, but you do have a lot of vinyl in the box this month. I mean, this is all the leftover 
vinyl from the bag and it's like almost a full roll. It's a lot. But for my exterior, I'm gonna be using this faux leather. I would suggest you keep it lightweight. If you are still kind of getting to know your machine and layers, you might wanna stick with maybe a water resistant canvas or a quilt cotton for the exterior. If you have an industrial machine, then layer it up and have fun with that. You're gonna also need a half a yard of your lining material. I am gonna be using some lining material on the exterior bag as well. So a nice full yard of lining material is really gonna be helpful if you are gonna be mixing it up a lot. And you're gonna need anywhere between a quarter to a half a yard of Decoville light. I'm using quite a bit of Decoville light today, so I would always suggest, you know, getting more than you think you need because you will use it in other bags. All right, here's our hardware for today. I'm gonna to use a one inch wide webbing today. So my hardware for the strap needs to be for one inch wide straps. So I have two one inch wide swivel hooks and a one inch wide slider. And then I have two one inch wide D-rings. And then I have a magnetic snap, just one set. And then four sets of rivets. You'll need enough zipper tape for three zippers. One that's 15 and three quarters of an inch long, one that's seven inch long, and another one that's eight inches long. And you'll need zipper pulls to go with that. Now, anywhere between three and four zipper pulls. Three is the minimum, then you, because you have three zippers. Um, if you want to have a double zip on the top of the bag, then you'll need four zipper pulls, two for that double zip, and then the other two for the other zipper pockets. And then I have a couple bag tags today. I have the beautiful bag tag that's in the box from the Heartwood and Hide, and then I have my custom made bag tag, which is also from the Heartwood and Hide. All right, here's most of the other stuff I'll be using today. First, as always, lots and lots of my plastic clover clips. For the top thread, I'll be using a Tex 45 weight thread from Size Swag. And then I'll have two needles of choice today. I have a Microtex 8012 and a Microtex 9014. You guys, the layers, they get very, very thick depending on the material you're using. I, you gotta have a thick needle for this one, guys. A 9014 or a jeans needle is gonna be helpful, especially if you're using vinyl. And then for the bobbin thread, I have my Guterman thread. I have some double-sided quarter inch wide tape, a lighter for cleaning up any raw ends, an air racing marker for my fabric, a one inch by six inch ruler, some small snips for cutting those threads, a stiletto, my handy dandy Kai scissors, a turning tool is gonna be very, very helpful, specifically for the flap, a stiletto and seam ripper combo. I have a hole punch and then also a rubber press. These are gonna be for the rivets I install. Okay, so most of the exterior pieces are going to have a Decoville light cut to go with them, which is smaller. So for example, you see I have pattern piece A and then pattern piece A2. You see how pattern piece A2 is much smaller? That's your Decoville light cut. Decoville light is optional. If you don't feel like dealing with it, you don't have to. However, it's not in the seams. So I highly suggest you do use the Decoville light because it does not add any bulk to the seams. All the bulk in your seams is really gonna come from your material today, which is why you gotta be smart about it. So A is our top of the front of the bag. I'm gonna be using the lining for this because I really like the contrast. You have more than enough though. If you wanted to use the vinyl, go for that. But I love the contrast of that front panel being a little bit different. And I already have my Decoville light adhered to the back. Pattern piece B is going to be for the flap. You can have a lot of fun with this, guys. Like a lot of fun. Uh, I have the Decoville light already attached to the back. But if you watch Kasaya's video, she has an embroidery patch that she puts on here, which is so cool. Uh, you can you can really have fun with this. Now you can you can play with this before you sew the bag. So if you're doing embroidery or something, you definitely need to do it now on your flap. Remember the flap will go like this. So keep an eye on replacement for that. But if you have like heat transfer vinyl or something, you can always add that on later. And the flap is also a fun place if you want to attach pins. You can attach like metal pins that poke through it. You can do something like that. Just remember that it is vinyl. So if you would do attach a pin to it and you take the pin out, you're gonna have a hole there. So it'd be like, I would have make it a permanent pin. All right, pattern piece C is your exterior slip pocket backing. It's one cut of your lining material. Pattern piece D is going to be the exterior front slip pocket. This is again, is considered part of the front of the bag. So again, I'm using my lining fabric for that, for the contrast. So this is consider this is my exterior piece because it has the Decoville light on it. And this is gonna be my lining cut, no Decoville light on it. Pattern pieces E and F are for the back of the bag. So you have one cut of your exterior material from pattern piece E, which is the back top, and it has the deck of a light installed. Pattern piece F is the exterior zipper bottom piece, just one cut of exterior material with the deck of a light attached. Next, we have pattern pieces G and H. From this, you're gonna have one cut of exterior, one cut of lining for both of them. For pattern piece H, 
These are gonna be your zipper panels. So one goes in front of the zipper, one goes behind the zipper, zipper goes right in between them. So for the back panel, you will have a piece of Decoville light that goes right down the center of it. For the front panel, because it is so skinny, there is no Decoville light, you don't need it. Pattern piece I is going to be the bottom gusset. You're gonna have one exterior piece with the Decoville light on the back and then one lining piece. And then pattern piece J is going to be your interior lining. It's just two cuts of your lining material. And then next we have pattern piece K, which is your exterior zipper pocket lining. Pattern piece L, you're gonna have two of these. This is gonna be for the zipper pocket on the inside of the bag. And then pattern piece M is gonna be for your handle. I am gonna be using the lining material again for that because I really love that contrast between the vinyl and the water resistant canvas. So here's our last few pieces. Next we have the exterior zipper tabs. These are gonna be for the zipper tabs for the exterior zipper pocket on the back of the bag. And then I have a couple little tabs here that are gonna go on my webbing to just kind of hide those raw edges. Each of these little tabs here that I'm showing you in the middle, these are both two inches by about one and one eighth inch wide. And then we have two cuts of binding. My binding is going to be one inch wide water resistant canvas. Okay, so let's start with the crossbody strap. You guys are gonna be shocked. I'm actually gonna sew the ends of my crossbody strap. I never do it. I always use rivets, but I'm using the rivets somewhere else today. So I'm gonna sew it. Uh, if you wanna use your rivets here, you can. You really, I think all the rivets are optional in this bag. You don't really need rivets anywhere, but I do like the way that they look on the bag. So I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save the rivets for the bag. But if you wanna use them here, you can. So first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my little strap end tabs over here. And I'm gonna add a couple pieces of double-sided tape to the back of them. So you can see I just do like a little diagonal piece of tape on the back and then I'll remove the paper and then kind of find the midpoint, fold it in half and wrap it around the edge of the strap. This is what Kasaya does in her video and it looks so pretty so I decided to do it too. So I'm gonna do this for both ends, just wrapping the tab around the edge, here we go. And if you're worried about like the end, like for this webbing specifically, I love this webbing, but it does have a bit of an unravel on the end. Once we sew this down, it's not a problem. But if you don't, you don't want to deal with it, you can definitely add some like Bacon 301 glue to the very end of your strap and that will just hold all those pieces together. So I'm gonna start with the slider. I'm gonna grab my little metal slider here and from the bottom, I'm going to insert one end of my strap up and over that bar. And then I'm gonna bring it down Let's see, I have this folded down currently about one and a half inches. Um, it's not rocket science, guys. You, you fold it down as much as you need to so you can sew it. So I'm gonna grab a clip and I'm going to clip this in place so I don't have to worry about it shifting on me. I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew a rectangle around this little tab right here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance just to attach the tab to the strap and also to keep this fold in place around the strap slider. All right, once you have that sewn on, keep your strap nice and straight with the fold over on the top like this. Go to the opposite end, make sure it's still stuck in place. Grab a swivel hook and do it so that the hook is down and the bar is up and slide it onto your strap. Once again, keeping it straight, fold your strap together going from the end over toward the fold over is go up from the bottom of your strap slider and over the top of that middle bar, down the other end, just like this. So now we straighten out, we have a swivel hook on one side, the slider in the middle, and then the tab on the end. I'm gonna grab my remaining hook, hook side up, I'm gonna thread it on and fold over that end tab, making sure everything is still tucked in. Once again, as much as you need, an inch to an inch and a half, whatever is easiest for you. Just do your best to keep it straight. I'm gonna use a clip to hold it in place. And now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna top stitch around the rectangle here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, and there you go. How cute is that little strap? Like I said, you can use rivets if you want. Um, if you have plenty of rivets, go ahead and do it. But I think I like this little fold over. I don't like sewing things down on straps for some reason, but I like the way this looks and the material is amazing. So you can set the strap to the side now. Now you're gonna grab all your front pieces. So pattern piece A, B, which is your flap, C, and D. We're gonna work on the front of this bag. All right, so you're gonna grab pattern piece D, the exterior for pattern piece D. I think, I think the pattern says C on accident, but you're gonna grab exterior pattern piece D. This is gonna be the front of the bag. And this is where we're gonna install the female magnetic snap. So you can see there is a mark for it on 
the pattern piece, but if you want to just measure it out yourself, you can. I usually prefer to measure it out myself just because I'm not, I'm not always super precise with how I cut out my pattern pieces. So just in case I don't want it like an eighth of an inch off. So I'm going to start by folding this in half. And if you can start marking the midpoints on the top and bottom of all your pattern pieces, that's just going to be easier for later. But you know me, I don't do that. I, I, I mark them as I go. So I'm just going to fold this in half and I'm going to pinch the top of my panel here. And I'm going to use scissors and cut just like the teeniest, tiniest little corner off of there so I have a nice little triangle mark. Uh, this just allows me to see the midpoint on the front and the back of the material. So no matter where I'm looking, I can find the midpoint. I'm going to find the midpoint on the bottom of this panel as well. All right, and then I measure down three and one quarters of an inch from that top midpoint and I drew a little dot. So now we're going to grab the female magnetic snap. And I forgot to show this in the beginning of the video, but this little... I think it's, how big is it? Let's see, it's 5 eighths of an inch wide masking tape. This stuff is really great, or it's duct tape actually. It's so it's so good for bags because it's not really big and bulky like regular duct tape. I'll show you what I do with that in a minute. But for now, I'm gonna grab my washer and I'm gonna center my washer over the back where that dot is. So the center of my washer is over the dot. And then I'm gonna mark in the slits so I know where to install the prongs. Then I'm gonna grab a seam ripper I'm going to very gently seam rip right along these two slits. Try not to go past them. Even if it's a little small, that's actually better than being a little too big. And then looking at the front, we're going to take the female side of the magnetic snap and just install it like that, pushing the prongs through the back. Looks like that. Grab your washer, install your washer over the back. If you want to add another layer of interfacing here, you can. However, I think the decoval light is enough. And then whichever your preference is, you can press the prongs in or out. I'm gonna press it in this time. Nice and tight, just like that. And then because this is metal and it's kind of sharp, uh, it can wear down on your lining over time, which is gonna be over on this side. So I'm gonna grab some duct tape. I'm just gonna cover it with my duct tape. How cute is that? <laughs> I mean, it's the back side, it's not that cute, but look at the front, there we go. So now we have our female magnetic sap installed. So now grab your flap and same thing. Let's find the midpoints. Let's find the midpoints on the two short edges. Same way we did with the other piece. Now, if you have a front of the flap and the back of the flap, think about that now. So if you're gonna fold this, if you're like, this is my front, this is my back, the magnetic snap is gonna go on the back. So think about that. Now with my piece here, I don't have a front and back, so I don't care. <laughs> so I'm gonna flip this over. And using the midpoint, I marked five inches down from that midpoint, again, from the back side. So this is the back side of the flap. And I'm gonna grab my washer, and I'm gonna center my washer over that midpoint, and I'm going to draw the slits for the prongs. And then I'm going to grab my seam ripper. And the pattern suggests you do not install your snap at this point because we are going to be top stitching this. And it can be pretty tricky to top stitch around this depending on your hardware. So I will tell you, it's not that close to the edge. So here's a finished bag. You see, it's, it's not terribly close to the edge. I think if you used a zipper foot while we were sewing and top stitching, you wouldn't have a problem with accidentally hitting that male end of the snap. So again, if you're using a zipper foot, you might be okay, but just, just to be careful, it's pretty much best to not install it yet. So we're just gonna leave it. But again, you have your slits already cut. That's the important part. We can install it after we sew the flap together. So take your flap and we're gonna fold it in half, short edges together, right sides together, and clip along the sides. Make sure everything lines up and we're focused on the sides, not the top. So now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along both of these sides at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, once you have that sewn, we're gonna trim down these corners. So I like to do a pretty like deep trim. <laughs> I don't just do like a 45 de degree angle. I go, I, I do a pretty deep one. I don't know why, I think it looks better, I don't know. All right, so now we're gonna flip this flap right side out, nice and gently. All right, and then once you get it flipped out, grab your turning tool and let's work on those corners. You wanna get these corners nice and poked out carefully, okay? A very sharp turning tool is going to poke a hole right through the corner and that's not the look we're going for. 
it's not a good look. So gentle, 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 poking those corners out. Once you're happy with it, give it a little press. Uh, depending on the material, you can use your iron if you need to, to press this. Otherwise, just press it with your hands. If you want to use some clips here to get it to stay nice and flat, go ahead and do that. But this actually, this final actually works really well, just like press like this. So now we're going to go to the sewing machine. I'm going to top stitch along the sides and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Only the sides and the bottom, not the top. We got to leave the top open so we can install the magnetic snap. So I do back stitch though at the beginning and the end. But again, top stitch, eighth of an inch seam allowance. And don't forget which side is the front and the back. The back has the holes for the magnetic snap. So if you have top stitching thread, make sure you're top stitching from the front of the flap. All right, once that's top stitched, now we can install the male end of the snap. So you're just gonna look at the front, try to find those slits, which can be hard to do on this material, but just do your best to find those slits and then insert the prongs through those slits to the back side, just like that. Open it nice and wide, grab your washer, and then just install your washer over those prongs. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can see, there you go. And then press the prongs open or close, whatever is easiest here, it does not matter. But I know sometimes these prongs can be kind of hard to open and close, so if you need to grab some pliers to help you, go ahead and do that. And I'll be honest, my favorite magnetic snaps are the magnetic snaps that have like a rivet back that go with your cam snap press. Uh, we, they're, they're not in the box because not everybody has the die set for that. However, if you do, have a cam snap rivet press, I highly suggest you get the die set for the magnetic snaps that have a rivet backing because then you don't have prongs at all. You just snap it in place and you don't even have to use the tape or anything. It's just like, it's just like the easiest. Once you get that in there, that was a bit of a bigger, I probably should have spread them open. I spread my snaps on in, inside, so on top of each other. They didn't want to do that. I should have spread them open. That would have been a lot easier. But now I have a piece of duct tape and I'm just gonna Add that over the top of those metal pieces, just like that, so it doesn't rub against the other side of the flap. And there we go. All right, if you have a metal bag tag, you can attach it to the flap. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna attach the bag tag elsewhere. Um, but if you have a metal bag tag, you can do that. If you have a sew-on bag tag, it's too late. <laughs> you had to install it earlier. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine. I'm just gonna baste along this top raw edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now grab your exterior front top A, and let's mark the midpoints on the top and the bottom. All right, so lay your A panel right side up. If you want to attach a bag tag to your A panel now, you can definitely do that. I would just center it. Let's do that. Let's just center it and see what it looks like because it is a little tricky to sew on the bag tag after you install the flaps. So let's just do that. So I'm gonna grab my Oakler Roots bag tag and I'm gonna add some double-sided tape to the back of it. So it's not completely centered, but using the midpoint on the top, I measured down one and a half inches from the top and I just taped down my bag tag just like this. So now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm going to just top stitch around my tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now take your A piece, lay it right side up, grab your flap. You're gonna lay your flap magnetic side up, top raw edge down. So match up the midpoint mark with the top raw edge with the bottom of your A panel. So make, look at the screen. This is how it should look. Um, and then use some clips and keeping those midpoints matched up, clip these together. It's right side of flap or yeah, top side of flap front side of flap to right side of a piece. And now we're just gonna baste along this bottom edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab your slip pocket backing piece C and you're gonna lay it right side down over the back of the flap, lining up the, what is the top of the slip pocket, the top straight edge with the bottom edge of the A panel where the pocket is basted in place. So now you have like a little sandwich. It's an A and C sandwich with a flap in the middle. So line up these straight edges and clip together. So A and C are right sides together. And now we're gonna sew along this straight clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So once you have those sewn together, take your C panel, the bottom panel, and flip it right side up, and the whole seam should be behind it. So the flap is facing up still, so you can see the magnetic side, but the C panel is going down. And now you're gonna top stitch along the C side of the seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so this is a cool little feature. I don't know if you guys can see, but you're gonna measure up from the seam on the back of your flap three quarters of an inch. So from this seam where they connect, measure up three quarters of an inch, and you're gonna mark on just the flap, keeping the flap on the A panel. 
we're going to top stitch over that three quarter of an inch mark the top stitching the flap to the a panel so don't move anything out of the way it is going to stitch down to the panel make sure it doesn't extend beyond the flap so i have it go off the flap just a moment and i back stitch quite a bit because it is going to have a lot of pressure on it but this just makes sure the flap doesn't get all willy-nilly wild it kind of gives it a nice rounded look when you use it and for this step specifically i like to pull both the top and bobbin threads to the back and give them like three knots. That's going to really help make sure that as you're using this flap, the stitches don't come undone. I mean, even with back stitching, they can still come undone with a lot of heavy use. Okay. You can set this to the side for just a moment and then grab your D exterior and lining pieces. And we're going to lay them right sides together, focusing on the top straight edge and clip these together. And now we're gonna sew along this top clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna cut these corners down off that top edge. And then we're gonna flip the lining and the exterior so that they are wrong sides together. So I like to just push the lining first and then flip this all back, lining up all the raw edges and clip the raw edges together. There you go. And once you have this all flattened out, we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch along the top edge, the folded edge along that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to baste around the rest of the panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold these two pieces together. So now we're going to just attach that front of the pocket to the main panel. So you're going to lay your pocket with the female snap right side up and just line it up on the bottom edge of your main panel that has the flap and clip together and you see once the flap goes down it'll attach just like that how cute is it if it's pulling everything every which way right now don't even worry about it the bag is going to be very structured it's not going to do that at the end so now let's go to the sewing machine and just base this bottom of the pocket in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance i do like to back stitch at the beginning and the end just in case it comes out you know when i'm working with it Alrighty, your front panel is now done. You can set this to the side. All right, so now we're gonna work on the back panel. So make sure you have pattern piece E, pattern piece F, your zipper tabs, your zipper, and your exterior zipper pocket lining. So let's prep this zipper first. If you haven't already, make sure you have your zipper pull on your zipper. And then you're gonna grab your two zipper tabs and you're gonna place your zipper tabs right sides together with the zipper, so coil side up zipper tab right side down short end is going to match up with the short end of your zipper tape and if it's wider than your zipper tape just line up one edge so just line it up against one of the sides so we can trim it down later so do this for both sides of your zipper and now we're going to sew along both these short edges at a quarter inch seam allowance make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end all right once you have those sewn on you can trim down the side of the tab so that it's the same width as your zipper tape. So this is easiest if you just keep it against the zipper tape like this and then just trim down the side like that. Yeah. Take your zipper tabs, flip them so that they are right side up and the seam is behind the zipper tabs. And now just top stitch right along that seam on the zipper tab side at an eighth inch seam allowance on both sides. All right, so this is what your zipper should look like now. Let's mark the midpoint on that zipper. So just fold this in half. And don't worry so much about matching up the ends of the zipper tabs. Worry more about where the seam is between the zipper tabs and the zipper tape. So I'm gonna pinch here and I'm going to, once again, mark the midpoint on my zipper tape. And I am cutting into the zipper tape with a teeny tiny triangle. However, zipper tape does like to fray quite a bit, even with a small cut. So you should grab a lighter and just melt right where you cut to make sure that those raw edges are sealed. So now grab your exterior zipper pocket bottom and mark the midpoint on the top and bottom of this panel. And then when your zipper closes and the zipper closing towards the left, take your zipper and lay it right side down, right sides together with that bottom panel along the top straight edge and use the midpoints to line the zipper and the bottom panel up together. So we start with the midpoints. The zipper is going to extend off the edge. It's longer. So not the zipper itself, but the zipper with its tabs will be longer than the top of this bottom panel. Just do some clips to hold these together. And now we're gonna baste along this top clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
So now grab your exterior zipper pocket lining panel and you're gonna lay it right side down. The shorter edge is gonna match up with the top of the zipper you've already attached. So it's right side of the lining against the back side of your zipper and line it up corner to corner with that bottom exterior panel and clip in place so the zipper sandwiched in between them. And now let's sew along that clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance and make sure you back it to the beginning and the end. Once you have that sewn in place, push the lining back so it's wrong sides together with that bottom exterior panel and straighten out the seam by the zipper. Make sure you get it nice and straight. I like to put clips on the side, again, just to ensure my lining doesn't get kind of cockeyed. And now we're gonna top stitch right along that seam below the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now take the bottom of that lining panel and flip it up so it meets the top of your zipper panel. So you see it's right side behind the zipper. I'm gonna flip this over. If you have a midpoint marked on the bottom edge, you can just line it up with the midpoint of your zipper tape. I don't have one marked, so I'm just gonna make sure I'm lining up the edges really well. And clip this in place and then just clip it along the top edge of the zipper. And now let's baste along this top clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now I grab the exterior back top piece and if you haven't, mark those midpoints on the top and bottom. And then take that top panel and you're gonna lay it right side down along the top edge of the zipper with the straight bottom edge of the top panel matching up with that zipper. Line up those midpoint marks and clip this together. So it's right sides together with the zipper. And it should be the same width as the top of your lining. So you should be able to do corner to corner here. And this should also line up with the sides of your bottom panel. And now we're going to sew along this top clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. Once you have that sewn on, press that top panel up and away from the zipper and the seam should be behind the top panel. Well, it's nice and flat. Take this to the sewing machine and you're gonna to top stitch right along that top panel at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now if you wanna keep some of this bulk out of the seam, you can definitely trim down this lining pocket on the sides um, so it's not in the seam for the bag. So I'll show you, just kinda of like fold it back like this. You can trim it down um, and then just sew it closed or you can have it in the seams. I'll tell you what, it gets bulky either way. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave it in the seams. Uh, and we're gonna just baste along the sides where the lining is at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold the lining closed and keep it in place. All right, now you can trim down the overhang of the pockets. And you can also trim down the overhang of your zipper tabs. So it's just one nice piece of material. So now this is where I'm gonna add my handcrafted bag tag. I just measured one and a half inches down from the top edge of the back panel using that midpoint. And I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and top stitch around all four edges of the tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have both the front and back panels done, make sure they're the same size. They should be. If they're just like a scotch off, that's okay. And so I'll be honest, for some reason, my back panel is always just a scotch smaller. <laughs> like it's always just a little on the small side, but that's okay. That's okay. I think it's probably because maybe I'm making my seam allowance too big when I'm doing the zippers or something, but I don't know, I'm doing something wrong. But as long as they're about the same size, you're good. You can set these both to the side now. So now we're gonna work on the handle. Um, if you're using webbing, you can skip this step, but I'm not, so I'm gonna do it. So to grab your handle piece and you're gonna fold it in half, long sides together, wrong sides together. If you're using an iron or something, you can press this. Um, if you're using water resistant canvas, you can press it with an iron obviously, or you can just press it with your fingers. Either way, it'll, it'll do. And then once you have that midpoint made, you can press the long edges once again back. This time wrong sides together where the long edge meets with that midpoint. And just give it a press. If you wanna use double sided tape here, you can definitely use the tape. Um, I find with this material, I don't really need to. It'll, it'll hold pretty well with just pressing with my fingers. But if you have a hard time using your fingers for this, then definitely use the tape or the iron. I'm gonna repeat with the other long edge, pressing it also back, wrong sides together to meet that middle. And then once you have them both pressed back, you're gonna fold it in half once again, kinda like a hot dog bun. 
and you should now have like a one inch wide long strip of material and the raw edges should only be on the sides. So I'm gonna use clips here to hold this together. Again, if you wanna, if you wanna go tape happy, go for it, tape it up. Okay, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along both long edges. We're gonna top stitch along both long edges at a quarter inch seam allowance, not an eighth of an inch, a quarter inch seam allowance. You can also just top stitch along the short edges as well, just to hold those closed. So I did that wrong. <laughs> I, I top stitched at an eighth of an inch seam allowance instead of a quarter inch because I switched out my presser foot and just forgot. Um, I'm going to show you why you don't do that though. So we're going to be top stitching a lot more. It'll be fine. If you make the mistake, you're going to be fine. It's going to look better if you top stitch at a quarter inch seam allowance that first time. It's going to look better in the end, but I'll show you. It'll still be fine. Okay, so now you're going to grab a ruler and you're going to mark in five inches from each edge. So five inches from the left, five inches from the right go in and use your air erasing marker and mark vertical lines on your strap. Now, if you did the quarter inch seam allowance, you're gonna sew over these marks and along the edge between the marks in the middle of your strap at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, creating this beautiful little box. Since I didn't do that correctly, I am still gonna do this. I'm gonna go over these marks, but I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance box on the inside. It'll probably still look good. So again, but I am gonna sew over the marks and then along the sides between the marks, I'm gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end and you tie off your threads, whatever you need to do to keep this strap looking nice and clean. All right, so I have that little inner rectangle done. Now grab both of your deer rings and just slide them onto this strap so you don't forget about it. I love that the pattern mentions that because you know what? I would install the strap and totally forget the deer rings. Okay, you can set this to the side now. Okay, so now get your front zipper panel exterior and lining, the back zipper panel exterior and lining, the long zipper, and two zipper pulls. Um, the box should have four zipper pulls in it for you, so you should be able to do a double zip here if you have the kit. Um, I'm just missing one, so I'm gonna use one of my own zipper pulls for the inside pocket. So it is ideal to have two zipper pulls on this zipper though. However, we're not gonna attach those until later. You can attach them now if you want um, and just kind of move them around a lot. Whatever is easiest for you. There's no reason to not attach them right now. If you want to attach them now, go for it. Uh, if you want to wait, then wait. I'm going to wait because it is easier to put them on without it. And we're going to start with the front zipper. So grab your front zipper panel and lay it right side up. And then grab your zipper tape and lay it right side down. The zipper tape is longer than the panel it's supposed to be. Just center it somewhat. You don't really need to mark midpoints or anything for this. Just make sure it has equal overhang on both sides and clip these right sides together. So I'm gonna continue my process of basting and then sewing on panels. If you wanna just layer the exterior zipper and lining all together at once using tape or just clips, that's up to you. I'm gonna baste this. So I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and just baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's basted on, I'm gonna grab the lining panel and lay it right side down on the back side of the zipper. I'm gonna fold this up though so I can see the exterior side and I'm lining it up corner to corner with the exterior side. I wanna make sure that these match up exactly. And then I'm just gonna clip it right along the same edge that I sewed. And now I'm gonna sew along this clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Now take your lining and press it along that seam. And then take your exterior and press it along that seam as well. So that we're pressing the exterior and the lining both wrong sides together. I know this is a skinny one, so just get it out of the way first. So I'm gonna pull these raw edges back, wrong sides together, and clip them together. All right, once you have this nice and flat, we're gonna top stitch along the seam by the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then we're gonna go ahead and baste along the raw edges of the panels at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold the lining and exterior together. So now we're gonna attach the back panel the same way. So grab the exterior back zipper panel, lay it right side up. Take your zipper and lay it right side down. And if you're not using midpoints like I'm not, then make sure you're matching up the sides. Okay, it needs to be at the same spot as the front panel. And we're going to clip these. So the zipper and back panel are right sides together. And now I'm gonna go baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So now that I have that basted on, I'm gonna grab the lining panel and lay my lining right side down over the back of that zipper tape and just line it up with the top edge that I just sewed, again, corner to corner with the exterior material. Always making sure everything is lined up. 
and just clip along this top edge. Now I'm gonna sew along this top edge at a quarter inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. Once that's sewn on, let's press the lining back. So I just give it a quick press with my fingers, which is easy to do with water resistant canvas. And then I'm going to press the exterior back as well. And then I'm gonna clip all the edges together so that I can flatten this out really well. So now, if you want the handle when we attach that to only be attached to the exterior material, meaning it's only sewn to the exterior material, what you're gonna do now is only top stitch along the seam by the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If you prefer the handle to be attached to both the exterior and the lining, then you're going to do that top stitching, but you're also gonna base the edges. So the benefit of the handle being attached to the lining and the exterior is that it is more stability, it's sturdier. Uh, I, I think it looks better in the end, but you will, you know, you can see the top stitching, you know, bottom stitches on the lining side, which I don't, it's not noticeable on the inside of the bag, in my opinion. Also, if you have really thick material, you might not want to attach it to the lining. I don't have really thick material, so I'm okay with it. So personally, I'm going to top stitch along the seam by the zipper, and I'm also going to base stitch along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but just know that if you're if you're not comfortable going through all those layers, you can just do the top stitching right now and not the base stitching. All right, so here is our zipper panel all ready to go. So now I'm gonna add my zipper pulls. So since I have a double zipper, I'm gonna attach one from one end and the other from the other end. So you see when they come together, they close. When they separate, they open. Very nice. All right, so now we're gonna attach our handle. So using your removable marking tool of choice, you're gonna measure along the raw edge of your back panel one and a quarter inch up and just draw a horizontal line along the back panel. The back panel is where we're attaching the strap. And then on your strap, on the right side of your strap, measuring in from the short edges, you're gonna mark one and a half inches, two and a half inches, and four inches. And you're gonna use, again, removable marking tool to mark those vertical lines on both sides. You have three lines marked on both sides of your strap. You can grab some double-sided tape and you can add just like a one inch long cut on the very end of each of these straps just to kind of hold the very ends in place. Make sure it's not longer than one inch though. Okay, now strap right side up. I'm gonna remove the tape on the left side over here. The bottom edge of my strap is gonna match up with that one and a quarter inch mark that's on the back side here. So the strap is pretty close to the zipper, not close to the seam, okay? That's where it goes. So I'm just gonna use the tape to kind of hold that in place. And I'm gonna do this one side at a time. So you should have done the quarter inch top stitching. Either way, you're gonna do it the same way here. We're gonna take this to a sewing machine and we're going to sew a little rectangle from the edge of our strap along the sides up to that one and a half inch mark over that one and a half inch mark and along the other side all at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just make that one little box on the left side for now. All right, once you have that first box done, grab your D-ring, just one of them, slide the D-ring all the way to as far as it can go. So where it stops at that stitching. So now you're going to press down your strap once again, lining up the bottom edge with that mark on your back panel and this time, starting at the two and a half inch mark, you're gonna sew over that mark along the edge and up to the four inch mark, and then along the other edge, at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Remember, we sew over the marks, but on the sides of the strap, we sew at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, creating a second little box over here that's gonna hold that D-ring in place. All right, there you go. So you see how now that D-ring is like nice and tucked in there. It's not going anywhere, very secure. Really cool way to add a D-ring in my opinion. I think this is neat. I, you know, I feel like I've seen all the different ways you can attach a D-ring and then this is brand new to me. So very cool. So now what you're gonna do on the right side over here, you're gonna pull up that strap, take off the paper from your double-sided tape and you're gonna, again, line up the bottom edge of your strap with that mark on your back panel and tape it down so that the raw edge comes raw edge together with the back panel. You can see you have this nice little poof in your handle and you're gonna repeat those last few steps exactly with the right side and the other D-ring. So I'm not gonna walk you through it. I'll just kind of sh run through the camera. I'll just turn the camera on while I do it on my machine. Um, but I'm not gonna walk you through it again because it is the exact same few steps that we just did just on the other side. Alrighty, so this is what your strap should look like. It's nice and 
nice and poofy and it's got the little day rings uh, so if it's real poofy I mean remember it's gonna be like this in the end so it's supposed to be up though it's a handle you know um, so now I'm gonna do some rivets rivets are totally optional um, but I'm gonna do them you might if you want to wait until after you attach your bottom gusset you can I did that with the first bag because you will have a seam over here so you if you want to center the rivets any which way I think I'm actually only going to add the rivets to this bigger rectangle this time so last time I added one to this bigger inner rectangle and then one also on this rectangle by the seam I think this time I'm only going to do this bigger rectangle so my choice of placement for this is going to be half of an inch from each vertical side and then half of an inch from the long side as well um, you can get creative with this but I'm just gonna pop the holes real quick and this is going through the lining if you did not attach your lining when you were doing the handle make sure you base down your lining before you attach the rivets because I, I do think the rivets should go through the lining as well so I'm just gonna push one rivet through there snap it in place on the back do the same thing with the other one, snap it in place. And that's how it'll look. I'm gonna repeat on the other side. All right, and once you have those rivets snapped in place, all you have to do is just give them a little press. And look how pretty that is. Isn't that pretty? I love it. All right, so now we're gonna finish up our gusset. So now your gusset and your zipper gusset, your bottom gusset, your zipper gusset should be the same width. For the most part if one is a little bit so like my zipper gusset is just a little bit more narrow than my bottom gusset that's fine for now just leave it just center it if you have like i have like an eighth of an inch overhang on both sides it's not that big of a deal but for now i'm just going to center it and i'm placing my exterior bottom gusset right sides together with my exterior zipper gusset i mean the zipper gussets it's all just one gusset now but it's exteriors right sides together and i'm going to line up these short edges and clip in place and now I'm just gonna quickly baste along that short edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And now with the zipper gusset lining right side up, grab your lining bottom gusset and lay it right side down. We're gonna work on the same edge that we just basted and match it up. And now we're gonna sew along the short clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance back stitch at the beginning and the end. Okay, so now I'm gonna repeat that with the other side before I top stitch. So if you wanna flip the bottom gussets out of the way, looking at the zipper gusset exterior right side up, Take the other end of the bottom gusset and lay it right sides together with the zipper gusset. Once again, if one is wider than the other, just, just center them for now. And now I'm gonna baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And now with the lining side up, take the lining bottom gusset and bring it over, lining it up with that edge we just basted and clip lining right sides together and then sew along that clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, back stitching at the beginning and the end. All right, now I'm gonna clip down these corners. You know, every little bit helps. I'll be honest, my machine is acting up, guys. <laughs> my machine is not, is not happy about sewing today, so it's throwing every curveball it can at me. All right, so now you see both edges are sewn in place. I'm gonna flip this so it's all right side out, exterior side out. And the bottom gussets are now wrong sides together, just like that. And now I'm going to give a gentle pull along the sides here. And you can see my bottom gussets are just a bit wider than my zipper gusset. Again, don't worry about that just yet. I'm gonna clean that up in just a moment. So I'm just gonna pull this. There we go. I'm just trying to get the seam right here nice and hot, nice and, nice and tight. <laughs> I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And just pulling these to get that seam nice and straight and tight. And now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch along the seam on the bottom gusset at an eighth of an inch seam allowance on both sides. Okay, so you can see it has just the very slightest overhang. What I can do is I can just trim it down like that. I'm not gonna trim down an eighth of an inch off the entire bottom gusset. I don't think you need to. If it's a huge difference, then yeah. But just a little bit on each side. This this seems to work just fine. So I'm just going to just close to the corner. There you go. Now 
Who, who knows? Nobody knows. All right, now that this is all good, we're gonna baste along the sides of the gusset. So I like to, I like to clip this before I do that because it is a curve and material has a tendency to move around in ways we don't want it to on a curve. And so I like to clip it just to make sure everything is exactly where it needs to be. So when I base this, I don't run into any, any surprises. So I'm gonna put clips on both sides of that bottom gusset. All right, now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna baste along both of these long clipped edges on the bottom gusset at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, there's our gusset. How cute is that? So now I'm gonna mark the midpoints. So I'm gonna match up the side seams here and use clips to hold this in place. And I'm gonna mark the midpoint on the top edge with my scissors and also on the bottom edge. And now I'm also gonna mark the side midpoints and they're not at the seam like you might think they are. Um, I do find having quarter points, so midpoints on the bottom top and the sides is really helpful whenever I'm sewing this together. So I'm just going to line up the midpoint marks on the top and bottom first and then pinch along the side. And you can see it's very close to that seam, but it's not at the seam. It's like just below it. But knowing that whenever I'm attaching this to the front and back panels is helpful. So I'm just gonna clip right there as well. I'm gonna do this for both sides. Okay, your gusset is all prepped. You can now set that to the side. So now we're gonna work on the lining. So grab your lining panels. You just need one for this. And we're gonna grab the lining zipper pocket, your remaining zipper, and a zipper pull. This zipper pull is my own because I am missing the zipper pull from the box. Um, I could have misplaced it, who knows? <laughs> so what I'm gonna do real quickly is I'm gonna mark the top and bottom edges of my lining panels. This is not a square, so make sure you recognize that. And by only marking the top and bottom for right now, that will help me remember which, what is the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna do my zipper pocket just like Kasaya does in her video. If you wanted to do a zipper accent on here, you have plenty of vinyl in the box to do that. I was gonna do a zipper accent since I sell those templates, uh, but I don't have any in my house. <laughs> I don't have any with me, so we're gonna do it this way. This is always another option. So on the top edge, which is one of the long edges of the zipper pocket lining panels, I'm gonna mark the midpoint. And on the back of that same panel, I'm gonna measure one inch down from the top. So this is the wrong side of the panel. One inch down from the top and mark a horizontal line. Then I'm gonna mark another horizontal line, half of an inch below that. And then I'm gonna mark a vertical line, one inch from the right and also one inch from the left. This is gonna give me a nice little inside box, a little rectangle. And then with my lining panel right side up, I'm gonna measure down from the top one and a quarter inch using the midpoints on the top of my lining panel and the top of my zipper panel. I'm gonna lay my zipper panel right side down, just like this, one and a quarter inch down from the top so I can see that rectangle. And I just tape it in place to hold it there. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew right over that inner rectangle, just making sure my needle hits all four of those corners and backstitch at the beginning and the end. All right, so once you have that rectangle stitched down, we're gonna mark a midpoint line going right along the center of that rectangle and then draw diagonal lines from the corners to meet that midpoint line to create little triangles on the side. Grab your seam ripper and start ripping right along the center of that pocket and then grab your scissors and cut along that center line until you get to the tip of that triangle and then follow the diagonal all the way to the corner of the thread. You really want to cut the material as close as possible to the stitching without cutting the stitching. It just takes practice. Remember this is a lining panel so if you don't get it exactly right that's fine. <laughs> it's not going to be noticeable in the end I promise. So now, once you have that cut, you're gonna push the pocket through that opening so that the pocket material and the lining panel are gonna be wrong sides together. So if you're using water resistant canvas, just give this a little finger massage first. Just, just, you know, carefully go along one edge at a time, pressing it with your hands. Try to get it as straight as possible. You don't want any wonky rectangles here. There we go. Give it a look on the front. And now 
I'm gonna take this to my iron really quickly and I'm just gonna press it from the front. So water resistant canvas can be pressed from the right side. I do not suggest pressing it from the wrong side. It has a coating on the back of it. You don't want that on your iron. So pressing it from the right side is fine. I give it a press and then I usually put a, a ruler over it really quickly because when you press water resistant canvas, it kind of loosens it up and it gets all wavy and kind of wild. But once it cools, it'll cool exactly how you have it. So I press it and then right after I take the iron off, I put a ruler on top of it and just kind of hold it down. And that is going to make sure that it stays nice and flat. So you see, nice, nice and flat, good to go. So I'm gonna grab my zipper and I'm gonna add my zipper pull. If you haven't already, make sure you do that before you attach it to the bag. And then grab some double-sided tape and add double-sided tape along both long edges of your zipper tape, right along the edge, not too close to the teeth. We don't want this tape to be seen in the end. So make sure you add the tape on both sides. Okay, so with your zipper right side up, I'm gonna take the paper off just the top tape for now. When zipper closes, the zipper moves towards the left. I'm gonna grab my lining panel that has that window and I'm gonna center it over my zipper. Now my zipper tape is much, much longer than it needs to be. That's okay. It's just what I have left over, so I'll trim it down. But I'm going to center this so it's over the window just like that. And I'm focused right now on making sure my teeth are as centered as possible in that rectangle. Once I'm happy with that, I'll lift this up and take the paper off the bottom tape don't let your zipper pull get stuck in the tape because then it's just a wrestling match. Flip this back down. Oh, look at it. Kitty cat went right into that tape. Look at you, just like, a, just like my other kitties. Okay, and then I'm gonna press the panel down. All right, once you're happy with it, we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and top stitch along all four edges of this rectangle at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just making sure that you're catching the zipper tape and you're holding it in place. All righty. Zipper's installed. Let's flip this over so we're looking at the wrong side. Grab your remaining zipper lining panel and lay it right side down, matching it up all four edges with the other zipper lining panel that's already installed. If it doesn't match up exactly, that's fine. Sometimes when we make these type of zipper windows, they kind of shrink, the material shrinks a little bit. Um, so it's okay, just do your best to get all these corners and all the edges lined up and clipped together. So once you have that clipped together, we're gonna to flip this over so we're looking at the right side of the lining side and you're going to pull the lining out of the way and you're gonna sew along all four edges of your zipper panel at a 3 8 inch seam allowance, go around all of them. Again, making sure you keep the main lining panel out of the way and backstitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, it's quick, it's easy, it's optional. If you don't want a pocket in your lining, then don't add, don't add a pocket to your lining. If you wanna add a mesh pocket, add a mesh pocket. If you wanna add a slip pocket, do that. Um, lots and lots of options. You should have made quite a few pockets by the time you're making this bag, so you should have some some creative freedom here. All right, so the other lighting panel, we're not gonna do anything with that, so just leave that out. Now grab your back exterior panel and lay it wrong side up, lining panel right side up, and match these up edges to edges and clip together. So remember, these two pieces are now wrong sides together. And then grab your front main panel and you're going to lay it wrong sides together with the other lining panel that doesn't have anything. And once again, clip together along all the edges and corners. All right, now we're gonna take both of these to the sewing machine and we're gonna baste along all the edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just holding the lining panel and the exterior panels together. All right, time for the hard part. Now, let me just tell you, sewing this the curves are not the hard part. The curves are not hard at all. The curves are actually wonderful. It's the layers. It's just the layers and the vinyl. That's that's what it is. So honestly, if you really wanted to make this bag and you're just a little hesitant with the layers, I would suggest like a wax canvas. I think this in a wax canvas would look amazing. So what I wanna do real quick is I wanna find the side midpoint marks on my front and back panels. So I'm just gonna fold my front panel together, lining up the top and bottom midpoint marks and use some clips there. And then go line up the corners and line up the sides and clip to mark those side midpoint marks. When I do full gussets like this, I like, I like all of the marks. I like to have everything lined up. I have to do more than just the top and bottom. I'm gonna repeat that with the back panel. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the front panel. Now here's the thing. 
start with the front panel or the back panel. Some people would say start with the back panel because you get some practice then and then you'll be better at it with the front panel. The thing is is that the second panel you install is going to be harder than the first panel. The first panel, they're both gonna be kind of challenging. Again, because the first panel is gonna be easier because you have less fighting you. The second panel is gonna be a lot harder because you have an entire bag that's very structured fighting you and you have to smush it down with one hand while you're guiding it with the other hand. So if you were gonna have a little bit of wonky seams, me personally, I would prefer them on the back panel. So, so I'm gonna start with the front panel. Front panel, right side up, flap down. You're gonna take your gusset and flip it lining side out. And the short zipper part of the gusset is gonna go against the front side of the panel. So the shorter zipper panel goes right sides together. Now I know this is confusing because it looks like I have lining sides on both. Remember, this is my exterior right side because I did that contrast. So that's going right sides together with the exterior material on that short zipper gusset. We're gonna line up the midpoint marks and clip together at that midpoint mark. I'm gonna flip this so I'm looking at the back side of my front panel. I'm gonna line up the midpoint marks on the bottom gusset with the bottom of my front panel and clip together. And then I'm gonna line up the side midpoint marks and clip together. I'll do this on both sides. All right, once I have all the midpoint marks done, I'm gonna just do the straight edges. So I'm not worried about curved edges at the moment, just straight edges. Just getting it held together as well as possible. Now, if you wanna use staples here, you can staple it. You guys know I don't, I don't do staples. I hurt myself once when I tried, so I don't, I don't do it, and I don't even have the proper type of staple gun. Um, Kasaya does a basting stitch. She puts these together and bastes them together at an eighth of an inch seam allowance first, and then she goes back and does the full stitch. I'm just gonna start with the full stitch because honestly, it's uh, my my arms are just not strong enough. <laughs> It hurts my arms at my sewing machine, so. Okay, so now when you get to the corners, you could, you should see that your corners of your main front panel are kind of puckering, and we don't want that. So what you're gonna do is you're going to move the front panel out of the way, and you're gonna grab some scissors, and you're just gonna cut like three or four little eighth of an inch to quarter inch cuts into the gusset only, not the main panel. So now when I tuck in my main panel and I pull, my gusset is going to spread. Those cuts are gonna spread around my main panel so that I can get my main panel nice and flat and nothing is rippling. So I'm gonna do this for all four corners. Alrighty, now we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and with the gusset lining side up, press it down. We're gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna use a zipper foot to help me with this. Um, I am using a Microtex 8012 needle right now. I will probably switch over to a 9014. Again, the corners are not difficult. It's not even the bulk of the material. It's just the number of layers and how dense they are. So just be careful. If you break a needle, if your thread breaks, if you have an issue, you don't have to redo everything. Just remove the bag from the machine, change the needle out, change your thread, get back at it, and just keep going. It's, it's, it's not that big of a deal if it's not perfect when you sew it around. Just take your time, use a stiletto, and go slow. All right, that wasn't so bad. You know what? I oiled my machine right before I did that step, and I think that really helped. I really do. I think that my machine was a little dry, so the needle was just like sticking to everything really bad. I don't know. Maybe that's not true. But I oiled, I oiled my machine and it was easier than the first time. So now I have my binding. And my binding is just the lining material. That is the length that the pattern suggests. And it's one inch wide. That's it. That's my binding. Uh, if you want to use elastic, go for it. I know Kasaya really loves using elastic. I'm just going to use what, what I got. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just folding my binding in half. Long sides together, wrong sides together to find the midpoint and it's just a crease. If you've been around for a bit, you know, I am not a neat binder. Um, I'm not that concerned with everything looking absolutely perfect when it comes to binding because I find that binding is like a secret weapon. It doesn't have to look perfect and it looks perfect. <laughs> so I'm not that precise with it. All right, once you've got that folded, I'm gonna start at the bottom edge of my bag here and I'm just gonna wrap it around that seam and clip it in place just like this. I'm just gonna go around, wrapping it around and clipping in place. And the fold 
that you just made, that midpoint fold, should line right up with the edge of your seam. You can see this bag is already very nice and structured, which is wonderful for a bag, but makes it challenging to sew the next step or the next two steps after this one. This won't be bad. The binding shouldn't be too bad. It's, it's sewing the back panel that can be a little difficult because of this wonderful structure. And so when I go around the corners, my binding folds over itself. You know, and that's the nice thing about elastic. If you use elastic, you can just kind of like stretch it around the corners so you don't have it folding in any which way. It looks very, very professional. I like to use elastic for projects where the binding's on the outside because then again, it is, it is still easy to use and it looks really, really good. But for linings, I find that using just the water resistant canvas works great. All right, once you get to the beginning, you can just let the binding overhang the front. I don't fold in anything or anything like that. It, I just let it overlap like that. So now we're gonna take this back to the sewing machine. Again, lining of the gusset side up, tuck it down, and I'm gonna sew the binding on now. I'm gonna top stitch it on at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end. This should be easier than the first time you sewed the panel on. However, the, the layers are still very thick. So make sure you take your time, use your stiletto, go slow, change your needle if you need to. All right, the binding looks really good. It looks really good. My machine's getting mad at me again though. It really is. It doesn't like the, it, I don't, my machine doesn't like anything right now. It needs to be serviced. All right, so now we're gonna attach the back panel. So we're gonna have the gusset exterior come right sides together with the back panel. Make sure you have everything lined up. Also with the back panel, let's bring both of these zippers to the center just in case, just in case. So top edge of back panel is going to line up with the top edge of the gusset right sides together, matching those midpoints and clip together. And then let's do the same for the bottom edge, matching midpoints and clipping together. And then do the same thing on the sides. And then just like before, I'm gonna start with the sides and then I'm gonna work on the corners. And like I did, I'm gonna go into the corners and do about three or four cuts into the corners so that it can spread around that back panel. All right, I know right now you're like, oh my gosh, I love it because there's so much structure, but then you have to take it and you have to smoosh it down and it does not want to smoosh down. So I'll put up that zipper. Um, it'll make it a little bit easier to smush it, but you gotta smush it down. You gotta, it, it's hard. I know it's hard. This is a hard step. It really is. Cause it is so structured, which we love, but also it makes it hard to sew. Now we gotta go around the edges of this and sew it on at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once again, if you wanna increase your needle size, go ahead and do that. Use a stiletto and a zipper foot, it makes it easier. Just go slow. Um, the corners again shouldn't be so bad, it's the bulk. Just do your best. Back stitch at the beginning and the end. Alrighty, stretch your arm out. Go ahead, give it a stretch, you earned it. How'd you move? I don't know how my zipper moved. I swear it was in the center when I started. Uh, that's tricky, it's a tricky one but I hope you did good. I'm gonna be honest, I think an 80-12 needle for me worked better than the 9014. Maybe it's cause it's thinner, so it didn't stick as much to the material, but the 80-12 worked really well for me. I thought for sure I'd have to switch over. All right, so I have my binding. You see, I just folded it in half like I did before, and I'm just gonna wrap this binding around the seam just like I did on the front panel. Doesn't that look good though? I mean, look at that. that doesn't that look good? That looks good. <laughs> All right, the last stitching. You got this, you got this. Remember, gusset, lining side up, top stitch, you're binding on at a quarter inch seam allowance. That's what I'm doing. Um, if you have binding that's thicker, you could use a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna do quarter inch seam allowance all the way around, back stitching at the beginning and the end, using a stiletto and a zipper foot and going slow. This is the last one, guys, the last, the last work. We did it guys, we did it. Now I just gotta turn it right side out. So take your time with this. Um, again, it is very, very structured, which is gonna make it amazing in the end. It just makes these last couple steps a little tricky. So be careful as you turn this out. Will you just look at how stinking perfect this looks? I mean, look at that. You pop out those corners and it's just, it's just gorgeous. 
You can give it a, a quick press. You know, it is vinyl, but you can use a pressing cloth to give it a pr press. Uh, but it will, it will flatten out on its own. It's just, you know, it's a wrinkly baby right now. It just came out. <laughs> it was just birthed. I mean, it wasn't birthed, it was bound. But still, you know what I mean. It's just a bit of a wrinkly baby right now. Oh my gosh, look at how stinking adorable this is. Ah, look at that. Goodness gracious. I can't get over this pattern, you guys. It's just such a beautiful bag. And you know what it does? It reminds me of like a little lunch bag, doesn't it? You could definitely use some sort of like thermal fleece or something like that with this to make it like a little lunch bag. I think it's a little too fancy for a lunch bag, but it would be a fancy lunch bag. And then look at the strap, get out of here. Get this clips out of here. Look at the strap with this. I mean, come on, right? That's an amazing bag. Oh, that is just gorgeous. I hope you guys love making this. And if you do make it, let me know in the comments if you're using an industrial or domestic machine. I am interested I'm interested to see how easy or difficult it was depending on the machine you're using. I am using a domestic machine and I would say it's middle of the road. Uh, not, there are bags that have been much more challenging for me to make, but um, I would not suggest this for beginners. But if you are a beginner, keep practicing because you want to make this bag. You need to get to the point where you can make this bag. It's amazing. Alrighty guys, what did you think? The corners were not that bad, right? I feel like the corners, a lot of times with bags like this, we look at the corners and we're like, oh, that's gonna hurt. The corners I felt like were very simple to sew. It's the layers, right? Now, I'm gonna be honest, my machine is acting up. My machine is in desperate need of a service. So, it's going to get serviced very soon. Um, I think that that contributed to a lot of my, not issues, just a lot of the like speed bumps I was running into. Because the material is amazing, the water resistant canvas is beautiful, the vinyl is amazing, the pattern's perfect. Like everything about everything is perfect, but for some reason my machine was just like, we're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna have a problem. <laughs> so I think it might be my machine today. So I'm interested to hear how it goes for you guys. Let me know down below if you're using a domestic machine or an industrial machine. Again, with an industrial machine, you're not gonna have any issue at all. Um, but let me know, and let me know how you use your material. If you post a photo of this bag on social media, please make sure you tag all of us. Like tag me, tag Asaya, tag the Bag Making Bee Club. We wanna see your version because I love this. I wanna make another one like this. This would be, a, it's a very cute like looking lunch tote, isn't it? So I definitely wanna make one with like a nylon material, maybe a wax canvas. I feel like a brown or a gray wax canvas would turn this bag into a much more masculine version of it because the shape, the shape is not feminine in my opinion because it is just kind of like a lunch box, right? It's like a lunch tote. So this could be a great bag for the men in your life. All you have to do is change the material. I didn't show you guys what this bag looks like on in the beginning, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, I am five feet, four inches. Let me get on my tippy toes. Uh, say small or medium, depending on the day. So here's how it hangs on me normally. It's a great everyday bag. I mean, for those of you who are just like, I don't want a big bag. Um, that's nice to not have to have a big bag. Uh, it's a great everyday bag size. It's very, very cute. So love this bag. It's another one of those patterns where if you really want to make something for a family member, a friend, but you don't know like everything they love, this is a great option. I mean, even this material is a great option, you know? So I think this is one of those patterns you just have to keep in your stash at all times. And it is really fun because it's like, once you make it once, you're good. I mean, I made it once following the instructions and following Kasaya's tutorial. And then after that, when I was filming the video, I was just pretty much going by memory. Like it, it all, it's very intuitive. It all falls together very easily. But again, that's where the bag experience comes in. If you've been making bags for a while, it will feel pretty intuitive just putting it all together. However, if you're brand new, you might want to start with a few other bags first to just kind of like get used to how bags come together naturally. And then this will be easy breezy. So thank you so much for sewing with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope you have a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.